Hey, everybody, welcome back, Devin Neoji. Hey, hey everybody, welcome back, Devin Neoji. Here for Lock and Load Publishing. We got a special treat for you tonight. Oh, what is this? What does it look like? We're playing Point Blank on Tabletop Simulator, and we have a very special guest with us tonight. Sean Drulinger, the designer of the game himself, is here, and he's probably going to kick my tushkas. Say that's hello, Sean. The, that's the plan. Hey, everybody. Mike off. Thank you for Mike joining on. and watching. So we're, I, I think we're in for a pretty good time tonight. Uh, let me, oh, yeah. Let me, let me this is a fun one. Uh, let me, oh, yeah. Let me, let me check everything. Yep, we are streaming just fine. So let me go ahead and post this to some uh, some social media. And you can go ahead and, and just let people know what we're doing, what the situation is, maybe go over the scenario, special rules, the setup, all that good stuff while I take care of the social media background. Oh, okay. Evening, everybody. Uh, this scenario is... Uh, we call it the tutorial scenario. It's a meeting engagement between two equal, equally sized forces of uh, U.S. and Germans. Uh, there is a bridge objective that is unoccupied at the moment. And it is um, the goal of the scenario is to capture the bridge and control it after two turns. Uh, the two clear terrain on the uh, left and right of the bridge are part of the scenario setup, so they start in play as per the scenario rules. Um, in the games, uh, terrain typically has to be adjacent to uh, troops in order to be uh, to stay in place. However, because because of the special scenario rules, the, the clear terrain will stay in place whether there are troops. Uh, adjacent to it or not. However, uh, troops that occupy it can change it out by doing an in-sector move so they can find better terrain in sector A0 or C0 if they want to approach the bridge from the from the flanks there. So the uh, Americans set up first. And um, so that's me. So I'm going to uh, start my setup and um, I'm going to start with my airborne squad here. So I've just, just kind of an overview. I've got a uh, M1 Sherman. I've got uh, three uh, regular infantry squads. I have Lieutenant Cray. I have a bazooka. And I have a 30-gal uh, machine gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the airborne uh, has to set up in, well, yeah, so all my infantry have to set up in A2, B2, or C2. So I'm going to set up my airborne in B2. I'm going to drop an infantry in A2. I'm going to drop another infantry into C2. Uh, I'm going to give the bazooka to the American airborne squad here. So if you notice this bridge here, this objective, you'll see that it has some flags on it, control flags. That's what they are. There, there's two white ones and, and one black one. And that indicates the type of troops. Uh, need, you need troops with those flags in order to control it. So in this particular case, the bridge would need a troop or at least two troops with a one white flag each. And they would need a black flag, which would be a piece of ordnance. So I just happen to have a piece of ordnance right here, this M1 Sherman, which has to start in C4. But if you notice, I also have this bazooka here, and it has a black flag on it. So it counts as a uh, part of the control of that objective. And if you notice, the airborne unit has two flags on it. So technically... I have what I need right here in B2. Uh, I can do it any combination between regular infantry in this tank or infantry in the bazooka or, or, or the tank. And so it, it's, uh, it is a, uh, a, you know, any combination. So once I have, uh, let's just say, for instance, I were in the bridge with those troops there. 
I would technically control it because I have two white flags on my airborne troops and I have a black flag on my ordnance. Uh, I can also control it like that with with these with the bazooka. If uh, I could also control it with the tank, the bazooka wasn't in possession. So any combination, and once you have control of it. You move into it, and you there you um, you are a sole owner of it. You own that objective until someone else comes and satisfies the same criteria with the flags. So, if there's any questions on that? Then happy to answer it. Uh, I have. Um, I'm gonna put Lieutenant Cray here now. I have my units set up, but I don't have them in terrain. Units cannot start in blank sectors. They need terrain. So special rule in the game here is for each setup of uh, units in a sector, you draw two terrain cards, and you pick the one that you like, that you want to keep. So um, I have to figure out how to... So I'm going to draw two. I'm going to start with A2 here. And we will flip. I have um, a wire and a. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm challenged here. Well, I don't want wire, so I'm going to. Um, Q, Q and E ro Q and E rotates. Okay. He's over here, and I'll put this here. So we're starting in clear terrain. Not the best. This is discarded. And flipping these. Oh, got a right, building. Which one you're going to take? Yep, you think? Mm hmm. And E. This over here, and these guys over here. I want to give a quick shout out. We've got a few people in chat so far. Bottom of the sixth, Commander Solo 193. And I see our friend Neil Bedeke's in there. He said he gives us a thumbs up. And who else? I saw Viper Dave. Uh, yep. And uh, looks like Hatchet Jack in, a, in a QT and Wood JH have also joined us. Thank you All for right. being here. Hey, everybody. And if you have questions, please feel free to cry out. I mean, this is the designer of the game, so it's like you're gonna get the get the actual game mechanics straight from the horse's mouth, not like me, who tends to get rules wrong on occasion. So if you got any, if you're confused about anything, just just make sure you holler out, and and Sean will be more than happy to answer your deep, penetrating, and insightful questions. Uh, yeah, and please pay no attention to my tabletop skills here because uh, this is relatively new to me. Oh, so uh, I gotta I drew a hill. Ooh. Hills are very interesting in the game because whoop, I didn't want to do that. Do this because a hill. Uh, if you're on a hill, there is, you have line of sight to everything. So uh, as it stands right now, I have two infantry units out in the clear. Uh, this was because of the special rule when you... And most of the scenarios are like this. And we left it like this, where there is a special rule for terrain draws in the beginning because it, there, it leaves it open for... Uh, other scenario designers to put together other different, you know, different scenario rule uh, terrain rules that they may want to have. So in this case, uh, if you have a unit in an empty sector, you draw two terrain cards and you pick the best one. So in my case, I drew a clear and a wire. So the clear was definitely the better choice. I drew uh, a, another clear and a wood building. Obviously, that's a good choice. And I drew, I think, uh, a road and a woods. Uh, the road terrain cards are interesting because um, in the game you can move between, you know, not only 
forward and back, but you can move left and right. And it costs you two to move into from one area to another area. So if I was going from C3 to B3, it would cost me two. However, if you start in a road, you don't have to uh, spend. That's one of the penalties for moving in for the area with infantry. So vehicles do not, by the way, just FYI. So, uh, so this is my starting setup. And uh, I'm ready to go, so now uh, over to the Germans, and they can do their setup. All righty, and my infantry have to be C2, B2, A2, and I believe my armor has to be an A4, correctly? That's correct. All right, so we'll just go ahead and put my little PZ3J even forces. Your Sherman outclasses my PZ3J. Ha. All right, so I do have three infantry squads. I've got an SS squad, uh, Panzer, uh, Panzer Faust. Or not a Panzerfaust, Panzerschreck, uh, RPZB-54, commonly known as a Panzerschreck, or Panzerfaust. Uh, Lieutenant Werner and a uh, machine uh, MG-42. So what I think I want to do, how do I, I have no clue how I want to do this. I have played this scenario before. And, of course, when you're playing against yourself, you sometimes don't always <laughs> see where the... Uh, the little nuances of the game can come from. So I think we're going to go with that. Uh, and then I get two terrain cards as well. So let's go ahead. Oop, did you flip the terrain file. over? Yep, you flipped the terrain deck. Oh, that's the extra. Never mind. I'm looking at the one. extra. Yeah. Oh, do you want to explain about the default terrain deck and the extra yeah. terrains? So uh, the, the, the game has what's called a default terrain deck. Uh, the game comes with extra terrain cards. Uh, in the beginning of each scenario, you will need to look at the um, terrain card section of the scenario. And in that table, it'll tell you uh, which terrain cards are removed from the deck and which terrain cards are added, if any. And uh, that is how you configure the, the terrain deck for the type of battle you're going to fight. So if you're doing something that's more in the town or in a, you know, an urban area, you'll have less things like woods and stuff like that. So I may say, remove five woods and add, you know, a, uh, and remove uh, a marsh, you know, so that way the chances of getting buildings and such would be more uh, likely than if um, you had those other cards in there. And since we've unlocked all the stretch goals, there are uh, oodles of other terrain cards that are coming, you know, coming out. So there's grain, you know, uh, wheat fields and cemeteries and uh, gullies and things like that. Uh, I, 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 I like the I like the cemetery card. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so taking a look at my terrain cards, I did not get as uh, as, as good a draws as Sean did. Uh, my Panzer three is going to be in the clear. My infantry squad with the uh, Panzer Shrek is going to be in the clear. My two infantry squads with the officer is in the road, which is basically in the clear. And then my SS squad with the MG42 actually isn't going to be in the stone building. So I think I know where I'm going to base my firepower base from. So, <laughs> All right, so yeah, you we got the terrain set up. And now, what's next? So uh, just uh, real quick, one more little note on terrain. So uh, if you are in cover, so that or uh, anything with an eyeball or closed or half an eyeball open, uh, you start off the game what's called concealed. Uh, you can be seen, you can be shot at. However, you get an extra plus two defense if you are concealed. However, if you're in clear terrain, or uh, a road terrain, or so, something that doesn't have a uh, you know an eyeball on it, uh, degrading or blocking, you are automatically spotted. So we could technically put spotted counters on each of our units that are in clear terrain, but you know we don't you don't have to. It's just that if you're in clear terrain, you're spotted. Even if you were unspotted before and you moved into clear terrain, you're you're you're, you're spotted. Okay, we uh, have have uh, not so many questions, but a couple comments. Evidently, people can't heal, hear me real well. Uh, I tried adjusting my volume. My volume is at max. I just wanted to let everybody 
let me know how the volume is sounding now and i'll let you get back to you what you were explaining sorry oh okay i mean can can everybody hear me yeah okay. you're they're saying your volume's fine it's my volume that they're having a hard time with which is turn... odd because my output is jacked all the way up to maximum so what about your microphone yeah it's sorry right. it's 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 the same as it always is. I, I haven't You're changed. You're playing loud and clear on uh, Discord here, so I hear you good. Okay, well, they're saying uh, I'm still low, but so let me... You go ahead on with your thing and let me see if I can uh, uh, if I can alter or change something on my side. Well, at this point of the game, we would deal out action cards to each other, so we each get five. So I don't... Charging battery. I'm deal them out. Yeah, yeah, so first just, off, just go ahead and if you want to, you can cursor over the action deck and just push a number equal to the number of cards you want to draw into your hand. So just cursor over it. And, How do you shuffle? Oh, shuffle. I already shuffled, but I can shuffle. Oh, you already shuffled. Yep. Uh, you just right click to bring up the drop down menu. And then you hit the shuffle button a dozen times. Oh. All right. So we want to deal. Uh, you can either deal or just draw five cards into your hand. So just go ahead and hit the five button and that'll draw five cards into your hand. All right. Eat your cards. Uh, yep, sure did. There was a little bit of lag there, but they got there just fine. So uh, if you want to kind of go over uh, cards and the iconography and what the dice rolls are, are uh, please do. Like I said, I'm still going to be working on my microphone to see if I can get the volume of it up. Can everybody see my cards, I take it? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. They can't see your cards because I can. Oh, let, you know what? Let's just go over and pull a couple action cards and flip them. And we can, I can zoom the camera in on them so they can see what you're talking about. All right. So the um, cards have, you're, you're basically going to be focusing on the icons in the upper left corner. Uh, most uh, cards have only one icon on them, but the ones that have two, that means that you can play both actions in the same impulse. And it does not matter what order. So in this particular card right here, uh, there's a rally and a ready. So you can rally troops and ready, or you can ready and rally. And uh, this particular uh, uh, one over here is a move, and, and it's got a uh, wind icon. So the wind icon is just sort of an automatic event type thing. So any smoke on the board gets um, removed. That's sort of an homage to up front. Um, so there's, uh, you know, let me see what other cards here you can. You know, so here's a cover card. So a cover card can be played out of turn if it's in your hand. Uh, this, if you're being fired upon by uh, a unit and you can throw this down, you'll get an extra plus two defense for your infantry. Uh, AFVs cannot take cover. Um, in the rule book, there is a listing of all of the uh, icons, and then I think the player aid cards as well, and what section they're explained at. So um, we can throw these back on the. Uh, I don't know how you get these back on here, <laughs> Devin. Yep, okay. And since we've already exposed them, we can uh, oops, use these. I can the throw them on top. And oh, yeah. 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 back in the deck. And three yeah. Oops. There we go. And you shuffle them up. Shuffle All right. So now we need, in this particular game, we need to determine who goes first, and this can be random with a uh, dice roll. So. If you want to do a, uh, a oh, all this stuff. So on the one, what is that? A one or a, is the uh, star six? A, I believe that is a one. Yeah. Let's and I got it too. Okay, so you're gonna go first. 
Uh, you know what? Let's just so we make sure we get this right. How about you start off first so you can talk us through all the phases? Okay. So the first phase of the game is upkeep. Uh, in the first turn, there is nothing to upkeep. Uh, however, if the special rules were not in place, the upkeep phase would see the removal of these two terrain cards because there is not any units adjacent to it. I don't know if you can see my green finger on here, but yep. uh, so, but because the special rules for the scenario say that the, the clear terrain on each side has to stay in place, um, they do not get removed. However, uh, if infantry end up in this sector, they can uh, perform a what's called an in-sector move by playing a move card, and uh, they would grab one of these counters right here, an in-sector move, and basically you'd be switching the terrain out for something more favorable. Uh, think of these sectors as a, not a hex, but a group of hexes. So in a regular hex encounter board game, hexes are one-to-one. -one, you know, a hex is filled with woods, a hex is filled with a building, and you're, you're in the hex, that's the terrain you get. Uh, the sectors here are more dynamic. Uh, the reason why we, we designed it like that is because you are limited in the number of spaces that you're going to maneuver your troops on. So if terrain was very static, you know, in the beginning of the game, it would be maybe a little dynamic, but towards the end of the game, it'd be very static and, and the maneuver would probably would disappear from the game. So being able to dynamically uh, uh, change out terrain when you're in a sector by doing move actions and things like that uh, gives that maneuverability feel to it without having to manage it completely. So uh, I can talk more about that if you guys like but uh maybe you can see the demo in uh, in in the game here so uh it's my first turn uh the first thing i'm going to do is uh you have a um two infantry units i think their range is three yep yep and you got degrading in here you know i'm going to take some chances here so the uh first thing that well actually you know what i'm going to I'm going to play a little conservative. I'm going to play a recon card. Mm. So a, a recon card allows me to do one of two things. I can try to spot units that are concealed, and if I were to um, uh, spot them, then they would become concealed. But the other thing it does is it allows me to draw two terrain cards, and um, I guess I deal this to me, right? Yep. Just hit the two, and it should put two right into you, and then you can choose which ones you want. Or you can deal a second one, yeah. Like I said, yeah. if you just cursor over a, a deck and just hit the number that deals the number of cards, I find it to be much easier than to try to do it all at once. So I'm going to discard this marsh here because... So I drew two cards. I got to keep one, and it's going to stay in my hand. And that terrain is, is favorable either to me or it could be detrimental to my opponent so an, again another homage to upfront i will explain that later but uh i am done my turn and do you refill your hand at the end of your turn or at the beginning oh, yes. of your next turn yeah so i gotta do i do one right yeah all right I'll at the end of your okay. at the end of your impulse you refill your hand uh, Wood JH did uh, mention that uh, he's very excited that you added smoke to the game. Yes, there is smoke in the game. All right, so I guess it's now my turn. And you know what? I like to play not so conservatively. So what we're going to do, I think we're going to play a move. And we're going to do it on this sector right here. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do, so I've played the move card, and then I go ahead and take a move token and place it towards the sector or area that I want to move to. Remember, sectors are up and down, areas are left to right, uh, and that basically ends my tune, turn. Now, do you want to explain why you made the decision of doing the movement this way and not completing the move on the same turn that you put it down? Uh well, first off, are you moving both guys, or are you moving... Yeah, both of them. Just one? All of them. Okay. 
So technically, you know, you can just throw the move counter on on both of them or whatever. You just win. That's fine. Uh, so the uh, movement's delayed. So uh, we see uh, units, you know, getting out of their position, getting their stuff, and starting to head towards their new position. And in my impulse, I have a chance to shoot at them. So it's sort of like an opportunity fire before they actually reach their new destination. So I could shoot at them or leave them alone, um, you know, at this point. But, um, man, I wish I kept that marsh card. <laughs> <laughs> so if I would have kept that marsh card in my upkeep phase, I could have dropped it into B1, and he would have had to go into the marsh, and that would have been bad for him. But um, I didn't keep it, so I discarded it. So it's – are you done your turn? Yes, I am finished, and I refilled my hand, so it flips back over to your impulse. All right, so it's my upkeep phase, and in my upkeep phase, one of the things that I can do is I can play a terrain card. I can play it adjacent to any one of my troops, or I can place it adjacent to one of my opponent's troops, providing I have line of sight to it. However, I'm going to drop this stone wall into the sector B1, because that's what we reconned. We said, hey, there's a really nice stone wall over there. And I am going to play a movement card. And I'm going to move out my airborne troops. And I'm going to flip this around like that and drop that on there. And don't forget to refill. Did you refill your hand? I did Seven. refill my hand, yes. All right, and I refill mine. Okay, should we and talk I a little bit about concealment right now since we have units that have moved out there? Yes. Oh, uh, so so a couple different things too. So, Devin, you you forgot to mark your guys as fatigued, and oh, so yeah, we forgot the fatigue one. You are correct. Yeah. So when you do when infantry performs a move action or a fire action, they they earn a fatigue marker. Vehicles that move do not earn a fatigue marker. They only earn a fatigue marker when they shoot, and so in this case. Um, both both of Devon's infantry units are marked uh, with a fatigue one. Now, now in, in the way I play, I usually mark both of them because when you perform a ready action uh, to possibly remove fatigue, you you don't remove the stack of fatigue. You remove one unit's fatigue at a time. So right now we are at. Over to you, Devin. Your upkeep phase. So now, did you movement's resolved. I did. Okay. Uh, movement is resolved in the upkeep phase. So Devin does not have any terrain. So uh, he has to resolve it from the top of the deck because uh, that has to be resolved before the impulse can start. And come on, Marsh. <laughs> nope, he got a nice building to move into. So the movement marker comes off. His units move up. That spotted marker. Uh, we, if there were units that were left behind in the road, they would be still be they would be spotted even though the other units did the action. When spotting occurs, you spot the sec you spot the uh, sector and the terrain, not the actual unit. So, because there's no units there, the spotted marker would. There's nothing to spot there, so uh, but they moved into the stone. The is that a wood building? Yeah, That's wood building. building. Yep. Yeah, so they're spotted, and now they're adjacent to the uh, bridge. Yep. So that's the movement, at, or that's the, uh, it's technically called terrain placement, correct? Is that the official term for, yeah. the, uh, mm -hmm. for, the, for the action and the impulse during the upkeep? Now I get to do another action. Really what it's called. I'm sorry, what? Terrain, re terrain resolution. Terrain resolution, that's right. You are absolutely correct. I forgot about that. All right, so now that was just during the administration phase, and just like uh, I, I get to do an action. You do. So I'm going to go ahead and play this card on the infantry squad in A2, and they're going to move. So I'll mark them with a the move marker. They will so now you, you've, got a, now you've got a flank icon in there so now you can do a flank check if you if you do a flank 
you may be able to flank my troops here in A2. It's an abstract methodology, again, an homage to upfront, but it just symbolizes that you found a position in your sector in order to flank my troops. And if you do flank my troops, then we get marked as flank. I, I get marked with a flank, you get marked, you know, you get marked as flanking. And you would get an extra plus two attack against me because you flanked me. So I'm in clear terrain, so it's not real good for me. And of course, uh, I do want to take this tactical advantage. So how do I check to flank? Conduct a morale check. So a morale check is conducted by doing a 2d6 check. So you would draw two cards off the top of the deck. And you would then determine if it's your morale check or, or lower. And if it is, you've successfully flanked me. Oh, I didn't do it. I rolled a nine. Yeah. Your units need more training. Yes, they do. They are not real good at flanking, it seems. But now, you in notice by doing these actions, also we're chewing through the deck. So if it is maybe a bit gamey, but doing things like this, conducting morale checks, uh, you know, you start to chew through the deck, and and it simulates. Uh, you know, the uh, rigors of combat and things like uh, melee, which would chew through lots of cards, uh, would would end the game even faster. So it's a two-turn game, so we have lots of lots to get, get through still. We have lots of cards left. All right, so that finishes my turn, and I did refill my hand. Okay. So it is my upkeep phase. My units now move up into the stone wall. My, stone, my spotted marker will travel with me. The movement marker will come off. And I am at fatigue one. And what do I have here? Well, um, I can look at my... my uh, I'm going to arrange it. Hmm. Okay, so uh, you're in a, a three building, and I got the bridge here. Hmm. Don't want to do that. Ah, uh, this so tempting. Well, let's do it. Let's do. Let's try a fire. Okay, I'm gonna fire my airborne at your infantry that is in the wood building. May not be resolved very well, but we'll give it a shot. So I have two types of attacks here because I have one, I have an ordnance weapon. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Yep, I'm zoomed in on it. Okay. And we have two fire factors on my uh, airborne here. So if you look at the little number two, on, if you look at the airborne unit, the uh, it's a red two, so that's the number of fire factors it has. And then there's a... A, a, su a superscripted two to the right of it. That's the range. So to determine range, you count sectors. So I'm starting from here. I go one, two. So I'm in range. And I have uh, so I have two. I have a leader. That's going to give me three. And you are at three. So uh, and I have a degrading terrain. So I have to subtract one. So I'm down to two. So you're at a plus one to me, and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw draw the first card here and flip it. It's a two plus a two um, is a uh, four. Check to you, and you would draw the top card. You would take your defense, which is a three, okay? And you would add a D6 check to it. Oh, it's a one. Yep, I pulled a one. So you're at four, I'm at four. It's a it's equal, so it's a push. So that's a no effect. So this goes to two. Now go and ahead, go ahead and explain a little bit what happens when you move to fatigue two. So when you move to fatigue two you earn some penalties. So you can't use your leader modif uh, modifiers in the um, um, in an attack. 
and you are at, uh, I believe, plus two, uh, when, or minus two when you're when you're firing. Um, I have to go look at my chart real quick. Uh, all, I, you know, one of the things that we haven't been doing is uh, using our leaders as much here, and I want to bring those up. So um, a leader um, can use its ability, which is uh, has the little two icons on there, in the impulse in addition to an action card. So you can play an action card and you can use your leader ability in the same turn. So right now, I you you cannot you you can reduce like I can reduce fatigue right now because I have a little ready symbol there. Um, but I can't reduce fatigue earned in the same impulse. However, I can re reduce fatigue from the previous impulse, so I can use him, and I can tap him, and then I can flip this back to one. Oh, we, we can't use the word tap. It's trademarked. Why is it oh, uh, still well, get mad at us? <laughs> you know, I have a feeling that there are probably no one from Wizards of the Coast watching us today. Maybe just Charging while. battery. <laughs> or Hasbro, whoever owns it. Um, All right, so that is your action. Did you refill your hand? Now, do you unspin the leader at the end of your turn or at the beginning of the next during the administration step? I think we might have lost voice on you, Sean. Can anybody hear Sean or can anybody hear me? Mic off. Mic on. All right. Can anybody hear me? I think I lost the mic for a little bit. Oh. Can anybody hear Sean? Sean, can you hear us? Okay, we got a little bit of a technical problem here real quick. Let me go ahead and see if we can resolve this real quick. Mic off. is three to five sectors away and the white number is six plus so there is no range limitation to a weapon uh in the game if you have a uh six plus Mike on um you could uh li literally shoot at any target on the board providing you can see them i should probably mention that you were uh we lost your voice for about a minute there so everybody kind of oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, okay. We're not sure what happened. You just, it, all of a sudden, you pop back in. So uh, I think everything's going good now. Uh, the last thing I heard from you uh, was I was asking if uh, you had already refilled your hand for it to flip back over to my turn. And I had asked if uh, the leader, uh, if you spin them during a turn, if they get unspent at the end of the turn or during the administration phase of the next turn. They get unspent during the admin turn of the next turn. Of the, of the next turn. So, in other words, if I used any of his abilities right now, I would he he would be spent, which would be uh, t uh, you know rotated ninety degrees, and um, he would come back without any additional action automatically in the upkeep phase of your following turn. Alrighty, 
that that was what we that's I think what we missed for the most part. Um, so you did not uh, spend him last turn to do a ready action to get one of your to reduce your fatigue to one. Oh, well, uh, I didn't. Um, but I I have the bazooka weapon. And I can still fire. Ah, yes. Okay. So I don't know if I was because uh, I was explaining that, and I don't know if everybody heard that. I don't. I don't think they they picked up anything about the uh, about the bazooka. All right. So the the play of my fire card allows me to fire the infantry fire weapon and one or one support weapon. So if I had a machine gun attached to this, I could not fire the bazooka and the machine gun. I'd have to pick which one. So I, I'd like to resolve the bazooka. Okay. And if you look at the bazooka, if you can zoom in on that. Yep. You'll see a colored band, red, yellow, white. This stands for the different ranges of the weapon. So red means it's uh, close up. Uh, yellow means it's medium range. And white means it's long range. The two numbers in each color, the number to the left represents that's a hit number. That would, with 2d6 check. The number to the right of it is the penetration number that would only apply to firing at AFEs. The black number up top, that's the HE uh, factor. So if I'm successful with it to hit, then I would I would then conduct an attack with the two HE. You would not get any uh, defensive modifiers for the train of the HE because the, the defensive modifiers are factored into the to hit number. So let's demonstrate that right now. So I have a bazooka. I am within two of your troops. I can see them. My to hit number is a 10. You are in a stone building or in a wood building. So you're down to three. So I'm down to a seven. And I have a degrading terrain between us, which is the bridge. So that's a grand total of a plus four modifier in the um, attack. So from a 10, I would need a six on 2d6. So if I, whoop. and if I flip these, I have a two and a six, it's an eight, it's a miss. So these are, so my attack is a whiff. Uh, and I mentioned earlier that the fatigue, if you, the leader can, has a, the ready symbol on the leader, for instance, here, I could use that to reduce one of the fatigue. However, I can't reduce fatigue earned in the same impulse. However, I can reduce the fatigue earned in the last impulse. So I will, I will use my leader and I'll rotate him. Now, could you not? Now, could you not? Could you not use your a leadership modifier in the ordnance attack? You can only use it in one. Ah, okay. Okay. So, I'd be a kick-ass leader if you could do it in two separate <laughs> attacks. But anyway, um, could be a good future leader. Anyhow, uh, so that concludes um, my turn. And I've drawn up. And this is where the situation stands at the moment. All right. So at the start of my turn, I have a movement that I have to resolve. So let's go ahead and remove the movement marker. I have no terrain cards in my hand. So I'm going to have to draw blind. Whoops, not the entire deck, just one card. And ah, hope it's not a minefield. Oh, it's not much better. Rain. How unfortunate. Not much better. This is why I did the recon in the first turn and got the stone wall. Well, I'd have done a recon if I had a recon card, but no, I didn't have a recon card. And I well, do you have a leader that has a recon action? Nope. Well, technically my SS squad could have, but that's getting into mechanics, what I'm sure we'll be getting to here in a little bit. We will. So uh, my leader didn't. Yeah, I, I, I just, yeah, I just didn't have any recon cards in my hand. So, I, but hey, you know, I'm fine. I, I, I like living dangerously. That's why I lose a lot of games. But that's okay. That's all right. So that finishes finishes off my administration phase. Now I get to do uh, my regular turn, and what I'm going to do 
is I want to get rid of some of that fatigue because I don't like my units having fatigue. So I am going to play a ready action. So go explain explain how a ready action can be used in its various sundry ways. So if you were to have a unit that was spent, so your units sometimes will become what's called spent, which they are ta are they're rotated ninety degrees. And there's very there's different ways on how you can do that because one of the mechanics of the game, if you don't have a action card that you can use for your troops, you can discard a card, pick any one of the available icons on one unit and perform that action. However, the penalty is is that unit is then spent afterwards. So it's the equivalent of the unit acting on its own and performing some um, uh, an action, and it's either regrouping or reloading, and that's what that means. The ready card allows you to take a unit that is spent and bring it back to good order status without any fatigue. On it. The, and here's the other thing: when you uh, uh, fatigue, if you if you spend, all the fatigue's removed, so you don't keep any fatigue if you spend. So it's kind of a good thing, but then the bad thing is, is you need a card to bring them back into into play. Or you can use a leader, like my leader, who has the ready symbol on there, because he's awesome. <laughs> so um, in this case, you have no troops that are spent. If you did, you could use that to, to bring one card back. And you can use it to remove one. You have a chance to remove one ready. So, so here's the thing. A ready card allows you to bring a troop back from spent to good, or... You can remove one fatigue automatically, and then you get a 50% chance to remove a second fatigue. So in this case, you can remove a um, one of the fatigue, and then on a odd card, you can remove a second one. Nope, even. So you don't get to remove a second fatigue. Now, someone had written and said, hey, make that a 1 to 3 or a 4 to 6, and I'll probably, I may change that because that may be a little more memorable for folks. So that is uh, the the bounds of a ready card. Now, what I want to do, because you were indicating this last time, I would like to take my leader and spend him for a ready action to remove the other fatigue on the squad that I wasn't able to remove with the plane of the ready card. Yep. There you go. You can only you can use one of the two actions. Yep. And that will end my turn. Both my guys are ready, though my leader is spent. Eh, maybe not the... But you're, you're, you're not close enough to assault me, so I'm not worried about not having his modifier yet. And I'll go ahead and refill my hand, and it's back over to you. All right. So first thing, I'm going to... Unspend my leader. This is my upkeep phase. I do not have anybody moving. So I am in a I'm in good shape here at the moment. Um well what am I going to do? Um I think I'm going to conduct a move action, and I'm going to mark these guys as moving. Me. Whoop, the wrong guy. Sorry. God. I suck at this. <laughs> it takes a little bit to get used to. You, you, you play it enough, you'll get you'll get the hang of it. I'm also gonna spend my leader here, uh, so he's gonna be. And I will remove the the fatigue. However, the move generates a fatigue, so it goes back on. <laughs> and so I would be normally at two fatigue if had I not used my my leader action. And that'll go there. Oh, I, I also uh, have a ready. So, wait a minute. Let me, let me back up. I'm going to use the 
ready action, not my leader, to remove the fatigue. Sorry, guys. I'm challenged here. So what I did, though, here, instead of using the leader's ready action, I used the, the other ready action of the card. So it has a move and it has a ready. So I had a fatigue on there to begin with, so I could have started with the ready, removed the fatigue, then did the move, then fatigue would come back on. I can't remove the fatigue in the same impulse with the leader, so I'm going to have one fatigue at the end of my impulse. And my turn is done, and draw back up. All right, well, we're gonna have something a little fun, some more rules explaining to, for you to do. Uh, I've got no movement, so I've got no administration, nothing in the administration step, and I'm gonna play a sniper. sniper. Oh, sniper. Okay. So, uh, sniper card, you get to pick the sector that you're going to conduct a, a sniper attack in, obviously. Yep. And you have to randomly determine which you are targeting. So, I have a leader and I have a uh, unit. So, you can determine how you want to do this, however way you like. One, two, three, it's the leader. Four, five, six, it's the airborne yep. squad. I, yep, I can live with that. One, two, three. One, so two, it'll three. be the leader. Shooting at the leader. Okay. So a the way sniper attacks work is you draw a 2d6, and that's the attack number. Ooh, I don't like the six. So, oh, ouch. Ooh. It's 11. This is going to be bad. All right, so I get the terrain uh but i'm also moving so it actually makes that a 12 because moving is plus one to whoever's firing at you i'm gonna buy a stone wall so that's two so i would take two plus a draw of a card and and flip uh, okay, so uh, essentially that is a plus uh, 11 damage check. No, and no, no, so plus 11. I rolled a 12, you rolled a 5. So it'll be. I rolled. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it's it's 2 plus 1. Oh, t uh, sorry, I'm looking at the, the, the one symbol on the left. It's a 3. So I rolled a 5. I'm sorry. That's okay. Right. The cards are a little smaller here. But zoom in. Uh, so, yes, it is a 5 to... Uh, a 12. A 12. So, so it's a plus, plus 7 damage check. Yeah. Plus 7 damage. So I now have to do a damage check, which is... Oof. Yes. So uh, that's bad. Yeah, that's bad. So, so it... My morale... This is seven. The five, uh, rule of six, I'm sorry. Six plus seven is 13. Okay, so basically what and, happens yeah. is he had to roll a damage check with the... Uh, the D6 plus the difference between our rolls. Our roll difference was seven. So it's a six plus a seven is a 13. He has to compare that to his morale. Uh, he is more than his morale, but he's not double his morale. Double. And for right. those, so, of, those of you familiar with the lock and load tactical system, will Im in immediately recognize this damage mechanic. Yes. So uh, I'm sorry, I got I, I was trying to figure out if it was more than double, and it's not, fortunately. So my leader does not get killed outright from the sniper. However, we got winged pretty bad. So the leader is marked shaken. I'm just going to put that over there. And the rest of my crew is okay. So that is Devin's turn. Yep, I refill my hand and it flips back over to you. All right, so my move 
resolves. So everybody, including the shaken leader, will move into the bridge. Now, um, at the beginning of my impulse, yeah, the, the spotted marker goes with them. It's the beginning of my impulse. I now control the bridge because I have two white flags and I have a black flag. I don't know if you're zooming in on that or not, Devin. Yep, I am. So that satisfies control of the bridge. So at this point, I would get a... I didn't pull out a control marker. Let me look for uh, it real quick. Cool. Okay, you're going to get it? Okay. Yep. Yep. So the U.S. currently controls the bridge. I win. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not our. Yeah, so I have to uh, maintain it for the rest of the uh, till the end of the second turn. Okay, so I have um, completed my upkeep phase, and I. Oh, we forgot to do the uh, the roll for the sniper card. We forgot that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So when a sniper card is played, there is a chance that the sniper card is removed from the game. I uh, forget the... Um, let me see if it's in my handy-dandy player aid here. I don't have... Player aid. Let me just look up sniper real quick. I got my player aids with me. Let me see if I can find it on there. There are only sn there two sniper two. cards in the deck, so they don't happen that often. Uh, I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah, so on a one or two, it's removed from the game. Three to five, it's discarded, and six, it's shuffled back into the deck. Well, we rolled a two. It's removed from the game. Now. So, you, you remove it from the game, and because it's removed from the game, we included two blank cards with the one pip on there, so as to not throw off the die rolling in a future turn. So if you were to draw that blank card, it's not completely useless, useless. You can use it as a discard action and do one of the several things that you can do with a discard, which we can explain later. So one less sniper in the deck. All right. Okay. So, so now catching, catching back up to where we were, where we're supposed to be. We are have completed the upkeep phase. I have moved into the bridge objective. It's the beginning of my impulse. One of the um, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to um, play my my rally card, and I'm going to attempt to, to rally my leader. So uh, I would need a seven to rally, and on two d six. I am in degrading terrain, so that adds a plus one to my morale check. So I would draw two cards and flip them, and I have a five. Ooh. And a six. Ooh, that was horrible. That was that was not good. No, that was that blue. I can't use any of my leader actions in while I'm shaken. Uh, that is the end of my turn. Alrighty. So I do not have anything administratively I have to do except for to unspend my leader. Uh, and taking a look at my cards, what do we want to do? Well, I think it's kind of obvious, and I'm pretty sure Sean knows it's coming. Yep. All right. So you want to talk? Well, we're adjacent to each other, so there's no concerns for line of sight. 
Yep, line of sight is automatic. And adjacent. we are definitely in range because my range is three and we're adjacent. So we need to figure out how much firepower I generate. I am going to have one, two, a third point for my leader, and then two points for being adjacent, or was it one point for being adjacent? I think it was one. Uh, let me look at my player aid chart again. Uh, firing range one plus one. Plus one. All right. Uh, so I have got a grand total of four. So it's going to be a grand total. Uh, and oh, you are in degrading terrain, so that's going to subtract one from my dice roll. Well, no. Oh no, that that I'm not firing through it. Only if you're right. firing through it. Right, right, right. All right. So I have got a grand total of four on my attack roll. Oh, I rolled a six, so that's going to be a grand total of ten. So yep. you, your defense value is going to be a three, four. So it is a, uh, a difference, six. A difference of six. Okay. So now you've got to take a morale test against each one of your units in there with a modifier yep. of plus six. So which one do you want to do for? Oh, you always do leaders first, correct? Yeah. Yep. So leader is, this is going to be bad, uh, nine, so he shakes again. So when a leader shakes again, he's eliminated. So my leader has been killed. My, oh, not the whole deck, Sean. Uh, and these guys, so that's 6 plus 6, that's 12. These guys are at 6. So that is double. So these guys, not only shaken, but they are reduced to a half squad. So this goes. And I do have, have a half squad pulled out for you down there on your lower left-hand side. That in there, they're there. Shaking markers on them, and they are fatigue remains. Now I, st I still control this yep. because I controlled it at the beginning of you know in my impulse. And because I did a fatigue eligible action, both of my squads are fatigued. And this is true. Correct. And that's it for me. I draw back up and it flips back over to your impulse. All right. Uh... No. Oh, actually, you know what? It's uh, We've been at this for an hour, so uh, let's go ahead and take a quick uh, couple minute break for if we need to get some water or go to the bathroom like I do or want to just take a quick break. So let's take a couple minute break and I will be well, we'll be right back. Sean, you can keep talking and, and explaining things. I, I just got to step away real quick. My God, well, I, I will explain the the situation, the game situation that I was a little too eager with my airborne charging into uh, the uh, infantry and using just the protection of a very weak bridge. Uh, so that was bad play on my part. Um, and I have some other forces that I can try to, that I need to probably move up in order to support the bridge. And uh, I could try to uh, rally those guys. Uh, however, I am uh, going to be doing something different. So I'm going to probably start moving some units up. Go wait for Devin to get back. And um, we'll be back shortly.
mic on. I can't see anybody's uh, questions or anything like that, so I, I can't answer them if you have any. Uh, I have to wait for Devin to come back. Mic off. Mic on. Alrighty, I am back. Can you hear me? Uh, yep, oh. here you good. Just want to make sure there's no questions before we move yeah, on. Yeah, no, uh, everybody is uh, is kind of quiet, and you were seems like you're doing an excellent job explaining things because nobody's got any questions for you right now. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. So it is my turn. Yes, it is. So I am going to... Um, play what is called a unit action card. And actually, I'm going to play it on my armor. And uh, a unit action card allows you to play only one, only activate one unit, not a stack. And you can use, you can play any one of the actions that are printed on the actual card. So in this case, I'm going to play it as a move card, and I'm going to play it sideways, indicating that I am going to a different area. Uh, he does not generate fatigue because he's in a vehicle. And that is my turn. Flip back over to my turn, and I really wish I had the cards to be able to capitalize on this little advance I got going here. Unfortunately, the cards are not happy with me right now, so we're going to have to play... I think the most advantageous thing for me right now is to play a movement card, and I think I'm going to move my armor as well, but I am well, going to be I'm moving gonna be... straight forward. All right. And I'm going to be done with my turn and refill my hand and back over to you. All right. So my armor moves over to this area. This movement marker is moved. Now I have to resolve terrain. I didn't manage to do any recon. So I'm going to hope for the best. And what do I get? Ah, I get wood. Woods is good for you. Well, now not so good because <laughs> when armor moves into woods, you have to check for bogging because I may bog down through driving through the forest here. So uh, on a tracked vehicle, uh, a one. Uh, do I have bogging numbers? Essentially, a one or a two will bog me because it's degrading, uh, it's blocking terrain. If it was degrading terrain, I would only need a one. So I will, my luck has not been good, but hope for the best. It's a five. We are golden, no bogging. Aww. So now it is my turn. Oh, you are, however, spotted, though. Oh, yes, I, I am spotted. So, uh, again, I am going to um, play another unit action card. And we are going to perform the same movement, same action. The unit action card, again, I can only play one of the actions on my actual card. And I'm going to select the movement action. So I placed a moving marker on there. And I am... Moving into the next sector here. That's where I'm going, and I draw one. All right. Oh. So for me to complete my or to start off my turn with the administrative step, got to complete my movement action. I have no movement cards in my hand, so I am just drawing blind and giving my fate over to the gods. Ah. Uh, so you building. don't. Right. So um, even though it is buildings do not cause AFVs to uh, bog. 
so they, they just drive around them. However, they do not get the defensive, uh, full defensive bonus from a building. They only can only ever receive plus one from being in a building terrain. So they're not in the building, but they're next to it. So they get only plus one when outside of a building. All right, did you draw that up? Uh, well, yeah, I did last turn. This is still my administrator. Oh, you're wrong. Okay, you're, I'm sorry. You're, you're, yep, you're actually yep, yep, yep. My, my apologies. That's okay. We lose track of where we're at all the time anyway, so not a big deal. All right, what I think I want to do, because there's going to be a tank rolling up on here really soon, I think I want to try to get my guys unfatigued. So okay. we're going to use the ready action. I don't need to use the rally action because I've got no nope. guys that are shaken, so we can ignore that icon. So I can automatically reduce one fatigue by one, and then I've got a 50-50 chance. Uh, let's call it even will successfully reduce. Nope, it's an odd, so I don't reduce that fatigue. However, I can use my leader's action of of ready to spend him to burn that second point or that point of fatigue off of the second squad there you go and then fill my hand back up and back over to you all right so in my upkeep phase i'm going to resolve terrain here And we're gonna flip. And it's a stone wall. I do have to check for bogging, but because it's degrading, it's only one. So I will put that. Oh, oh my god! This is. I hope you got bogging counters out. Uh, no, but I can get bogging counters out. Okay, so. Not the end of the world. Uh, I, I can try to get out of bogging by playing a ready card, but I am bogged down in there. Uh, the spotty marker comes up. Now, uh, I've not done my upkeep phase two. This hill, um, no, nothing's adjacent to it. Okay, diagonal does not count. So there's no unit here, no unit here, so it gets discarded. Now, for those of you that may think, well, what happens if someone moves back into that space that the removed terrain card was in? Sean? You would draw a new terrain card. Yep. Oh, and David's popped in. He's saying, Devin, don't let Sean cheat you. I'm the one that's... Uh, the, the cards are not doing well for him right now, so I, I don't think he's cheating in the least. So I don't think so we it, have to worry about that. It is my turn. Yes, it is. Still and uh, I, you have those units that moved into the clear up there. So I'm going to do a uh, fire action. And I'm going to fire these two infantry squads right here. Okay. Uh, so uh, both are at range three. So I got one, two, three. Uh, I have two. So I'm going to form a fire group. Okay. To attack. So when you form a fire group, you use your lead infantry and you use half rounded up. So essentially it's going to be two. But if I had three in this stack, which is that's the max that you can have in any one sector, you would add all of the, uh, you would add your lead unit and then you would add together your remaining units, divide by half and round up. So if I had three one fire factor units in here, it would be three. Uh, it would be uh, one two, plus one half plus yeah, one half. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it would, be, it would be a grand total of two anyway. So I'm going to fire here. Uh, now, before, they, before you pull your fire card, I am going to pull a cover or going to play a cover card. Okay. So that is a card that you can play out of turn. And you can place it on uh, infantry in an infantry firepower attack. And you get an extra two. So uh, I have two plus d6. So I'm going to flip that. So that's one. What's miserable. 
And I have a two yeah. because of the cover card plus one. Oh, you, that came in handy for you. Yes, it did. I mean, uh, technically you're always spotted and clear anyway, but because I fired. Yep. And uh, let me get another one here. One of these guys. All right, so that is my turn. And as you guys may notice, there's a lot of it's back and forth. The turns go quickly, so if you know what you're doing, you can get through a game quickly. Yeah, we're we're spending a lot of time explaining every action we're doing uh, because this is, of course, a demonstration game. So, but taking that out, you can see how fast this game does play if you know what you're doing. Like Sean said. Like Sean. Thank you. All right, so, uh, so my my impulse, my administrative, my upkeep, I don't have anything other than unspending my leader. Um, now, I have four cards in my hand because I played the cover card last time. Remember, you don't fill up your hand until the end of your turn. So I'm only going into this turn with four cards. So let's go ahead let's and go ahead. we want to play a move card. On my little uh, Panzerkampfwagen 3J. Uh, so let's go ahead and put a moving marker on him. Uh, he does not build up any fatigue. And that basically will end my turn. Now I get to draw back up to five cards. And over to Sean. Okay. Uh, upkeep phase. I don't have any. So uh, one of the things that I'm going to do is I am going to try to unbog my tank. So I'm going to play a card with a double icon. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to play a ready card. So, so to unbog a tank, you need to play a ready card, and then you need to draw for a track vehicle a 3 to 6 to unbog it. And anything lower than that, it remains bogged. If it was a wheeled vehicle, like a truck, it would be four to six. So I take my card and I flip it. It's a two. I remain bogged because I suck today. <laughs> and um, because I have a ready, because I use this ready action, I get a chance of removing a, a ready marker so that would be an even number. nope or did i say it was odd I, it, it was it's a 50 50 you need declared it before the roll so i think i think as long as both players agree on that uh, yeah, yeah. it should be fine <laughs> yeah i it's i there's you know 90 pages of rules so forgive me if i don't remember every single thing but even though i wrote the darn thing um, I apologize for not having that readily available. I don't have all my charts with me. So uh, I don't get to remove a fatigue. I do have a unit action. So um, I will uh, play the unit action on these folks, and I will do... Oh, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Not in those guys in the building. I'm going to fire one of my units here. He will get two. The other one I can't use because I, it's a unit action, so I can only use one guy. I'll fire one fire factor at the... Um, Units there in the clear. I so, do not have any cover cards to play this time, so I am still sitting out in the open, so my, my modifier is going to be a whole zero. Deck back, Sean. Flipping it. It is a five, so you get a five plus one is a six. And I've got a four, so you defeat me by two. So I have a morale test at plus two to make. And three plus two three is plus five, two. which is equal to my morale, so no effect. You get to live. For now. I am still out in the open. 
All right, and I I am drawn back up. All right, so administration, uh, I get to complete my move action from last turn. Now, we've already got a clear card here. Can I draw another terrain card if I don't want that one? No. You if once a once terrain is in place, you have to utilize it. Oh, that's too bad. So now if you notice, you have an orphaned terrain card. I do. In sector four. So it goes away. All right. So let's make this a little bit more exciting because there is a Sherman bearing down on me. I am going to go ahead and launch a melee into your half squad shaken airborne squad. Now this uh, works similar to movement. I indicate the units that are going to be moving into melee and I indicate which direction they're moving and the action does not get completed until next turn like a move action and since it is well essentially a move action I generate fatigue. I will discard that and I will draw another card up to full and back over to you. Well, that wasn't very nice. I'm sorry. Okay, so, uh, well, no time like a rally. <laughs> Good time for it, actually. Yeah, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to resolve this ready. I'm going to try to unbog my tank. Uh, I need a three or six. A, we're unbogged. So part of the ready action means I get to a 50-50 shot. I'm going to say, uh, well, I've been drawing a lot of odds, so let's go even for the um, the, uh, actually, I'm going to go even with this. No, I'm going to go even with um, this two fatigued infantry squad. Alrighty. And it's not. So that didn't work. And now I have a rally. Then I'm going to attempt to rally my airborne. Now, one, two one, one thing we should probably point out that's a little different from this game than other games, you don't need to have a leader to rally. No. Nope. So uh, my, uh, let's see what my, my morale is a six. I'm in degrading terrain, so that gives me a plus one. And I have my 2d6 here. So that's a seven. So I do rally, so I am no longer shaken. Just stirred. So that will help me in the ensuing melee. Uh, and my... I draw back up. Here we go. All right, so the very first thing in the administrative step is always resolving melees. Even before resolving terrain, it's resolving melee. So we're going to jump right into melee now. Uh, it's assumed that I move these guys in here, but just, just so we don't get things cluttered, I'm not going to move them in there yet. So, Sean, go ahead and talk us through how we figure out melee. Okay, melee is very bloody, and it chews a lot of cards in your deck. For each fire factor that you have you will draw a d6 check each d6 check is then uh, uh you're you're looking for a four or higher for every hit uh that's how many hits are applied to your opponent the opponent with the most hits wins the melee uh ties go to the defender and if um i'm not killed outright from the melee, I'd have to retreat. Or if you're the attacker and you attempted to melee into the bridge, you would have to retreat back to where you came from. So in this case, you have two fire factors, plus you have a leader. So you're going to be drawing three cards. And there is a handy-dandy uh, chart for melee. So you are the attacker. Uh, defending unit sh uh, 
So one of the first ones, defending unit shaken. I'm not shaken, so you don't get a bonus for that. You got your leader. Uh, uh, any defending unit spent. Uh, I'm not spent. And on my side, I'm in degrading terrain, so I'm going to get plus one. I'm going to get... Um, that's it. And I'm going to get plus one for my... Fire factor. The bazooka is not a, cannot be used in um, melee. If I had a machine gun or something like that, I could. That would be a support weapon. So I have a two and I have a three. So I whiffed completely. I've got you have a hit. So uh, you have, so I would be shaken. I I lost the melee, so I have to move out of the of the uh, bridge, and you get to move into the bridge. But notice that control does not change. What's missing? It does I not have am, an. Ordinance. I am missing an ordinance control flag. Yes. So technically, it is still under American control. And let's see, we don't have any cards on my side that are still, that are... That we're still in the up to face. Yep, yep, we're yep. still in the up to face. Uh, and I, that's it. I've got no other moves, no other melees, anything else. So then we go right into my turn. And oh, uh, yeah, never mind. Uh, all terrain's still good. Yep, uh, that's, that's, yeah, what I, that's, that's what I was looking at when I moved up. It's like, uh, does this go away? The road go away? No, it's still got units next to it. This wood building still has a unit next to it. So uh, we go right into my turn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play this card. And I'm going to move my Panzer III again. And so we're going to go ahead and mark that. And I got a recon action I can take. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to look at terrain cards, choose two terrain, or draw two terrain cards, and choose one to keep. And we're and going to get rid of get... that. And we are good. Draw back up to draw my hand to limit. My... And it is and your it is. turn. All right. Uh, upkeep phase. Oh, let me get rid of these cards. Mic off. And I have nothing from an upkeep perspective, so I am going to play a movement card on my M4A1. Move. And I'm done. Mike on. So you have to re resolve your Panzer III yep, movement? My movement. So we'll go ahead and take the movement off. We'll move the Panzer III up here. He does not get a fatigue. I do lose that spotted goes away. Now this wood building is all by itself. No one's right next to it, so it gets discarded. And then we go and into my action phase, or the, my phase. Uh, I almost feel bad doing this. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh i'm gonna go ahead and fire on the guys that are right adjacent to me uh i have i'm gonna drop a oh, cover card drop then. a cover card excellent excellent so i'm gonna generate two firepower one firepower and a half firepower but it gets rounded up so it's two uh add another one for the leader so that's three and that's all my modifiers Now you get plus four because you've got the cover card and the terrain card. So I got three plus one is four. So whatever you roll is going to make you safe. 
So that's uh, eight. Yep. So you're no effect. And if you'll notice, I draw. I draw. It. I can speak English. I drew the sniper card. So just because there's two sniper cards in there doesn't always mean you're ever going to get a sniper. A lot of times the sniper cards are, are eaten by just pulling uh, dice rolls. So, but now, since I fired, that increases me to two fatigue on both of my guys. Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a card. And over to you. Oh, yep. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. All right. So I am going to resolve my German. Put that over to the side. Now I am in, uh, we're going, oh, okay. And what am I going to do now? Well, I am uh, going to show you the fun factor of firing a tank. <laughs> so we are going to drop a fire on the tank. Um, when I fire an AFE, I get to fire all of its weapons. So I get to fire the ordnance at one target, and I can fire the uh, um, machine guns at, at a at a different target if I want to. So to demonstrate this, let us fire the ordnance at the PZ-3, and we can show how line of sight works. And we can fire the machine guns at the, uh, the, the, the German folks on the bridge. OK, so let's do the ordnance first. So. Um, you want to if you want to zoom in on the M R A one. So, I have my target over here. So let's count the range. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So it's two over. Going from areas is two. Going in sectors is one. So because it's a a three to five, we use the yellow numbers because they are three to five. So I'm going to need a six to hit. So that's the base number. So now we need to determine line of sight. And this is actually not going to happen because line of sight, the way when you have two units in two different player areas, the way you draw line of sight is, is I would trace line of sight to my zero sector. He would draw line of sight to his zero sector. If there is any blocking terrain, from here, from the A1 to A0 or B2 to B0, it would it would uh, block. However, I have degrading terrain. So, unfortunately, two degrading terrains together equals a blocked line of sight. So, I can't see this tank. So, the tank is probably relieved, but the infantry are going to... <laughs> So I can never, I couldn't see the tank to begin with, but the infantry, I've got one, two, so I'm two hexes away, two hexes, sorry, two sectors away. So I'm going to use my red numbers to fire. So it's an eight. So it's an eight on two d six. I have a stone wall here that's intervening, so it's plus one. So I need a uh, seven or less now. Well, wouldn't wouldn't the line of sight be blocked because there's two obscuring, or no? Do because you not count the zero. You area? Yeah, you can always fire into a hex. Right. You, you just if I was firing through it, it would block. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That's why I can't fire at this tank. Yep. But I, I can fire into set. So line of sight, do, you know, uh, terrain doesn't block an attack if you're firing into it. So I do have a stone wall in between. It's it's degrading terrain, so it'll be a plus one. So I'll need a uh, seven, and then you're in a bridge, so it gives you plus one. So that is a plus two. So I, from an eight, I need a six on a 2d6. Then we'll draw two cards. Flip them. I rolled a seven. You're very lucky. Well, so, against the main gun, you've still got a... 
ton of machine gun fire flying my way. Yeah. This, okay. So the way uh, you you don't add them together, you fire them separately. So uh, I'm gonna first fire the four fire factor at them. Uh, I do have a wall in the way, so that's gonna be uh, uh, minus one to my attack. So it's gonna be a three. You're in a bridge. It's gonna take it down to two. Well, that's on my roll. Okay. Here, here I, get we'll the I get the plus one defense. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So uh, I'm at uh, a three, and we're going to flip. So I'm at five plus three is eight. You roll two dice for a machine gun fire? Oh, I'm sorry. Eh. My bad. So this is going to be the second. That'll be the second. Yeah, that it was, the it was one. the first. That's a, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, Not a problem. I, was, I wanted to fire my ordinance again. <laughs> All right. So since I got a seven to your three, there was no effect. Your right. second one is with the two right. machine gun factor. Two, two plus four. Well, one plus four because you have to subtract. Yeah, one, one plus, plus four. four. Uh, I got, I've got a one plus four is a five. Okay. So tied. Yep. Tied. So, I am getting extremely lucky. No effect. They fired. They get a fatigue. And I get to draw two cards because I had the cover card from the previous turn. Yep. Mm, or all right. Fate. A lot of tired troops on here. Yep. I think I'm going to try to take care of that, though. Go ahead and pull a ready action. And we'll reduce this one. And then a 50-50 to reduce that one. We'll go with uh, even. And it's an odd, so it doesn't. But I will spend my leader to do a ready action to reduce that fatigue. And that will be my turn. Draw a card to right. refill. And whoops, back over to you. I'm going to use a unit action and play it on my armor again. So now if you look at my armor, you'll see it has a fire action on here. So that means that I can fire uh, uh, at a target. So um, I will fire the same target again. I'm going to do it in the same exact order. I needed a uh, six before. So that is what I'm going to hope to get. And I've got, oh, I'm just not no. even close. Ouch. So that was my um, ordinance. ordinance attack. It's a miss. So I'm going to do a fire attack of four. Uh, and that will be three plus. And I have a one. Four, so a five. So ah, finally. Finally. So I lost by one. So I need three morale tests. First, we're going to do against the leader. So at a plus one, four plus one is five. His morale is six. He's good. Now, since he's since he spent... He can't does he use, get... Nope. Not when, when you're spent, you cannot use your morale. Your morale okay. Fire. So then I have to okay. roll against uh, just their base morale of the two units. We got the first one at a one plus two is a three, which is less than five. So he's good. And then one plus up oh, there. There's a seven. That is one. Finally, that is I, one I, fire. I drew some blood. Yes, you did. And that was with, just with the first machine gun. You've still got a second machine gun. So I'm going to draw my second one here. Flip it. So that's going to be five down to four. And mine is going to be a six. So no effect with the second machine gun shot. So I get to flip my fatigue over. Draw that. And I'm drawn back up. All righty. Um... Oh, one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to... 
there's... that's that's one thing I find myself forgetting to do a lot of times too. So especially when it's terrain in the back, nobody pays attention to it, so it's okay if you miss it for a few turns. So, okay, so I ready my leader. Um, and what do we want to do? You know what? Since you've been doing it so much, I, I want to get in on the action. I want to do a unit action as well. And I want to move this PZ3. And we're going to move it forward. And that is going to be it for my turn. And draw back up. And back over to you. So, um, well, now we're do. Well, I am going to discard a card, and I am going to do a spend. Actually, yeah, I'm going to use it to reduce one fatigue. So you can discard a card and use it to reduce one fatigue, which I do on him. And that's my action. Okay. So I get to And that's just part of the uh one of the actions that you guys you that is available to you. You can discard a card and reduce one fatigue. All right, start of my turn. I am going to go ahead and complete my move from last turn, and my tank continue goes rolling up into a zero. We're going to have line of sight between tanks now, I believe. Uh, no. Oh, because I'm still. Oh, yeah, because there's two. There's there's two degrading terrain between my tank and the zero. All right. So okay. plus that degrading. Now, if you were here, a one. <laughs> That's a whole different ball game. Be, it might be coming. It might be coming. All right. What do we have? What do we want to do? Hmm. Got not good cards in my hand. This belongs there. Sorry. Well, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spend Lieutenant Vanna for a rally action. I want to rally my shaken dude. Okay. Now, so you get plus one because you're in degrading. Right. Do I right. get to add in the leadership right. modifier? Yes. Uh, no, not when you spend him. Ah, annoying. All right, so it's going to be two cards, and I'm going to need to get a six, and I do not. I get a nine. But since I played the ready action, I also get a 50% chance to reduce the fatigue anywhere, correct? Well, no, you played a rally action. Oh, I did the rally. Oh, that's right. I did the rally, not the ready. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, that was the rally action I did with uh, Lieutenant Vanna, um, and I still have... Only rally in your sector, yep. the leader. Yep. And you cannot rally, so infantry rallies infantry and armor leaders rally armor. Correct. Hmm. Yeah, part of me is thinking of just dumping my entire hand. You can do a hand flush, but you don't control it yet. But you're about to. You can do a discard action and spend and move into there if you want to. That was always fun. No, we're not going to do that. Now I can discard that, a card to reduce to do a, a ready action, right? To, no, just to reduce one. Just to reduce fatigue. one. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to take that card, and then we're going to reduce the fatigue of that guy by one. Yep. And that'll be my action. Okay. Refill my hand, Refill my and hand. back over to you. All right. I'm going to hope for some better luck here. <laughs> I'm going to play a unit action and a ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to re re reduce fatigue on the Sherman. And I got a 50-50 shot with 
one so so for an even hey there you go so i'm gonna flip this guy this guy back over to a one and so the ready action is complete so now i'm gonna do, do another unit action and i am gonna fire at these guys <laughs> So he will get a fatigue for that. And firing the ordnance is, I think we need, we determined that we needed a. Uh, you needed a six. Six. And again, a miss. Now, uh, I've, I've noticed you don't have any acquiring rules for, for this. Is there, no. Was there a reason that you decided to go against that? Uh, j just because the, it, it's not like a hex, um, uh, based game where that, where, and it would really only meet, uh, uh work for armor. So not acquiring infantry. So yeah, there's no acquisition in the game. Alrighty. Well, you've still got your machine gun fire. You've got, uh, yes. a three. I mean, the, the vehicles are plenty deadly against, uh, <laughs> yes, they are. So uh, we're going to throw four plus six. So finally, so that's going to be a nine, actually. And I've got a one plus three is a four. So you beat me by five. So yep. I need to make, to make morale tests uh, plus five. We'll do the leader first. So the first one is five plus three is an eight, which is higher than his morale. So he is going to be shaken. Uh, the leader, uh, or the, not the leader, the first infantry, uh, again, it's a five. I, he's going to be shaken regardless, but we still, uh, five plus two is a seven, so he's going to be shaken. And the third guy, who's already shaken, is going to be five plus three, which is an eight. So he's going to be shaken again, but he's already shaken, so he takes a step loss. So let's go ahead and move that off there, move that over there, grab the... Half squad, put the fatigue on it, and put the shaken on it, and that was the first or second machine gun? First machine gun. All right. So we have one plus four, so five. One plus two. Oh, one plus four. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a plus one for my terrain. Six plus one is seven. Okay, so uh, no effect on the second machine gun. So uh, my armor, he already got the one. This is going to go here. Now we are at the end of turn one. So what happens at the end of a turn? All units that are spent become unspent. All units that are fatigued reduce their fatigue by one. So everybody on the board gets to be refreshed. And we shuffle we flip that to turn two. Give it a good shuffle. Actually, we've been at this for almost two hours. This oh, yeah. is probably the best point we could have gotten to to uh, go ahead and call the game here. Sure. So that is a look at Point Blank, Sean's latest design on Kickstarter right now for Lock and Load Publishing. I can't really put the link really up, put the but link just up. go over to Kickstarter and do do a word search for Point Blank. You'll be able to find it. We have uh, reached the reached the the the, the goal, uh, so we are going to be releasing the game. It is going to print. We also went ahead and unlocked all the stretch goals, so everybody who participates in in the in the Kickstarter at this point will get all the stretch goals. And Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about all, what all the stretch goals are? So uh, most of the stretch goals are more units. So uh, we decided to provide uh, British airborne paratroopers, uh, British regulars, uh, British leaders, British support weapons, uh, Canadians, Canadian leaders, uh, Canadian support weapons, 
uh, and a uh, Canadian weapon team, not to mention uh, some British armor. So there's, I think, a Cromwell and a Firefly. And uh, not to be undone, there's additional German armor. So I believe there's a Hetzer. And uh, I, for, I for, can't think of the, off the top of my head what the other... I think there's a uh, Panther in there for the Yeah, Yacht Panther is in there. Yeah, Panther, yeah, in there. Um, uh, there's a German Luftwaffe. And uh, uh, some more support weapons. So uh, there's like uh, the Pupchin. Uh, mm. Pup, did I say Pup, Pupchin? Uh, Pupchin. Yeah. Yep, I love the Pupchin. It, it was an early yeah, war German right. recoilless rifle. Yeah, there's a sort of early war, but there were a few that were uh, mixed in with some some low level units, and um, more objective cards. So there's different objectives. So in the game, you know, there's I don't know, probably about fifteen different objectives in the core game, and uh, we we give you I think uh, four or five more. Uh, there's more terrain, uh, of course, more scenarios. And uh, some campaign stuff, uh, solo, and uh, design your own. So if you were to, to zoom in on one of the cards, De Devin, yep. uh, pick one. Okay. Uh, and if you look on the side there, there's a little red number. That is indicates the DYO number. So you can buy points and uh, create your own scenarios. Uh, we did um, write two different scenarios specifically for DYO. One's a meeting engagement where you can do a you know low-level points meeting engagement, and there's another one where there's a higher point meeting engagement. Then there's one that's defender versus attacker. And uh, so the defender would get a set of points, and the, def the attacker would get three times as many points. And uh, so there's rules for uh, you know how do you choose objectives and how you set up and, and all that stuff. So that is all in there. And how many cards total is available in this entire collection? A uh, poker size, I believe, is 698. And um, the mini cards, uh, I think there's uh, My with, uh, off. the um, expansion. I mean, all the Kickstarters is 119, I believe. So, a lot of cards. My God. Um, you are correct. That is a huge yeah. amount of cards. My yeah. God. Uh, two sheets of counter sheets. Uh, mainly, uh, they are uh, uh, administrative counters. Uh, and yeah, in you you have this grid here that you know. So when you buy the game, you it'll come with a map that looks similar to this. However, uh, if you don't want to play with the map board grid you can just simply use the counters that come with the game that mark the sectors and the um, um the the areas so if you have if you're you know say you have like a small My card God. table this may be a little tight on a card table but you can use the uh, counters instead sort of like the way up front was with the relative range counters and, and such so um you get nine pounds of uh of game in this and um there's uh gonna probably be i think there's over 20 plus scenarios probably more than that uh that'll be coming with the game so you'll have plenty of things to do with your forces excellent and david did go ahead and post in the chat the link to the kickstarter so if you've not if you're not backing this yet go on over check it out you know you want to it's a great game i enjoy it sean obviously enjoys it because he's the one who designed it and i think we're going to go ahead and call this for a night uh sean do you have any uh closing comments or anything no i'd like to thank everybody for uh sticking around for the entire game um i hope you'll get a chance to check out the Kickstarter and consider, you know, backing uh, the game. Uh, the game, if it's uh, successful, we look to uh, expanding uh, the game with uh, different fronts, possibly East Front and or Italians or Desert and uh, or, uh, you know, talking with Dave, maybe some expansions with just some troops, you know, Polish or Belgians or Dutch or um, you know, the Danes, maybe. <laughs> uh, 
So uh, there, it is really a, a very expandable game, and uh, we, we you know, look forward to uh, seeing what the future holds for it. Well, I look forward to all that stuff. Hopefully we will get enough interest generated so we can see this as a series game to come for years, years and years and years from now. Uh, so I, we're going to go ahead and call it. Questions, comments, comments, criticisms in the comment section below. I'll talk to everybody later. See, ya. See you, everybody. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Devin.